So um, I'm very thrilled to be here on stage with you today in Amsterdam. What a pleasure. So we will be discussing um, a very important topic, and I'm so glad to be with, joined by two thought leaders today, talking about making digital real, how a corporation and startup use co-creation to innovate negotiations. And today, I'm joined by Patrick and Matthias, Patrick is actually the head of insights and enablement for procurement at Roche, and he's leading the function's strategic procurement element and transformation. And Patrick joined Roche back in 2018 from a consulting industry prior, where he delivered major business transformation projects, cost reduction and restructuring programs over the past 14 years for various clients across various industries. And Matthias is co-leading Lean Linking, a leading provider of enterprise software for managing the relationships which, between the buyers and the suppliers. And he has an extensive background in procurement and supply management for over 10 years in consulting, and the last was McKinsey. So I'm so excited to be here with you on stage today, especially because we will be talking about two of my favorite passions. One, collaboration, how two parties join forces to create something great. And the second being, and that's one of my favorite passions, negotiation. Uh, how to create commercial alignment between the orchestration, between the buyers and the sellers. So at the end of this session, we will also have to, we will be sharing some light on how you can make digital transformation real by a completely different engagement between an enterprise and a startup. And you will hopefully have a better perspective, a new perspective on how and why commercial negotiations are especially relevant in today's macroeconomic environment. So let's get started. Over to you, Patrick. Patrick, Rush has very much been through a very radical transformation, especially in procurement over the last years. But I've been hearing this word transformation, especially in, in procurement, so, so much these days. Maybe you can tell me what exactly you guys did and what's so different and, and how this role digital is really playing forward right now. Great question. Thank you so much. I think uh, radical is, is a great term. Uh, so three themes for me stand out in what we've done. Number one, our objectives. So we didn't just want to create another better procurement organization, but we wanted to create a different procurement function, a function that is equipped to finally deliver on the many promises as we as professionals in procurement have been making. Sustainability, risk, value beyond savings, all these big terms that everyone keeps on talking about, but very few actually deliver. So our objective was to, to do that, to do something very different to create the ability to deliver. Second, I think what stands out in my opinion is how we organized ourselves, how we are structured and how we, how we work as a function. We retired a lot of the traditional, or most of the traditional ways procurement is organized. So in categories, in operations, sourcing, this and that, and in silos, and we've become pretty much like a consulting organization. Um, much more flexible, much more agile, and with the customer at the heart in our center and what we do. And the third element, super critical, is our approach and our thinking about digital. So two things here. Digital is a key source of value for us, delivering value for the business in terms of automation, self-service, but also outcomes, many different outcomes, and also enables our procurement organization differently. And I think those three things together really make our transformation we've done very, very different. Thank you so much for sharing. And Patrick, the, you know, being just the, the, the whole be, being excited and connected, the, these elements explain the role that digital plays to enable and enhance procurement's performance. So I wonder, how does lean linking fit into that picture? And why focus on negotiations? Yeah. So I think I answer the second question first. Why, why negotiations? For me, and I talked about sort of bringing more efficiency into procurement before, 
For me, negotiations consumes a lot of headcount, a lot of time, and we needed to, in order to have a more efficient organization, find a different approach to, to negotiation. And the second reason why I focus on negotiation is everyone believes in procurement we are great negotiators, but I think we can do more, we can do better, and we can get greater value out of this and sort of turn a lot of the theory that we have in negotiation into much more tangible practice. So again, digital, a key enabler. Lean linking, I think, um, same vision. We did a lot of market scouting analysis, and we found them, wanted to partner with them on co-creating something that didn't exist and doesn't exist in the market. So that's more aligned to what we want to do and how we want to do it, rather than sort of listening to some of the big roadmap items that other big providers may have. So we decided to go for co-creation, found a partner, and we are doing this together. Super interesting. And I have to say, from a procurement background, a very much untouched territory. Um, Matthias, next question goes to you. I mean, this is truly a, a very exciting perspective to, to be in, especially looking at negotiations. Since if we look, procurement or negotiations is usually this in-person in element. Um, in, in your point of view, why focus on negotiations and what are you co-creating exactly together with, with Roche? So, good question. And by the way, I fully, um, fully understand what you're saying, Patrick. And uh, I fully agree. Negotiations is a fundamental core capability within procurement, one that has not been served by procurement providers very well. And I would argue that negotiations will become even more important going forward as a tool to go to market and build a foundation for the business that you're building together with your supplier partner. Why is that, right? At least that's what the roughly 200 CPOs and procurement leaders like Patrick that we've interviewed over the last two years are telling us is the world has become more difficult. We have a seller's market. You need to become customer of choice. You need to nurture relationships with your vendors. At the same time, you have inflation, recession. So you need to engage your supply base commercially because as a company, you need to protect your investment. And then on top, you have all these additional mandates, right? That are coming in DEI and ESG that sit outside the normal cost control and supply assurance that you have. So in that market environment, the typical go-to market with RFX, for instance, is failing because they are expressly designed to disrupt relationships. Can't do that. Brute force tactics, price demands don't work because you can't risk to antagonize a vendor that you may need down the line in the race for, uh, for capacity and bandwidth. So you, what, what those procurement leaders are telling us is that they need a different way to go to market. They need to negotiate better and scale that capability across the business. And we, we think that Technology has a crucial role to play here. It can bring automated analytics that turn data into actionable advice, inbuilt best practices and benchmarks that help with structured decision making, guided decision making, and come to better outcomes. And that's, in effect, what we are doing with Roche. Why? Because if you have all of these technologies, as a negotiator, you get the time and the insight to think about what you really need to think about in a complex negotiation. What are my objectives? What are the targets that I'm setting? What is the market that I'm operating in? What is the power balance? How do I structure a superior negotiation strategy? Yeah. And you need a strong partner to do that. You can do it by yourself as a solution provider. But what's much better for many reasons is that you actually do it with a strong partner. And we're happy that we found Roche to do that together with us. Absolutely. And maybe if we just follow up on, on this, there are solutions out there which, which already automate negotiation to some sort, but maybe you can explain in more detail what is different with deals? That's a, that is a good question, right? We don't do automation. We provide automation support and AI guidance. Uh, why? And there are really great tools out there. I'm nodding my head to Pactom or Digiproc, for instance, who do a wonderful job in the low complexity scenarios such as price alignment. The challenge is most of the spend that you are negotiating sits in MSAs, frame agreements, more sophisticated SOWs, for instance, right? And in these situations where you have 10, 15 different negotiation variables, you're not talking about price. You're talking about IP rights, indemnities, performance parameters, SLAs, penalties, a lot of these things, right? And even with the best a priori negotiation design, you can't automate that. So what the users actually need is, as I said in the beginning, right, they need automation support and AI guidance so that they are empowered to build better negotiation strategies, ones that create value and preserve the relationship with their vendor. Mm -hmm. At least that's what we at Lead Linking believe. Absolutely. 
Patrick, um, your, your view on feasibility of, of RFPs and automated negotiations are challenging, I would say, the traditional way procurement has been done in the past and especially building that whole bridge. Maybe you can elaborate a bit more for our audience. Why did you choose to invest into negotiations and not into other solutions? Well, we're also investing in other solutions, but negotiation is a very critical core process of procurement that I think to an extent has been overlooked from a digital enabling perspective a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because we all believe we in procurement, we must be great negotiators. I think that's sort of a, a, a mindset change. But the question is for me not how do we replace our negotiators, but how do we make them better negotiators? How do we make them faster? How do we get better results out of negotiation? And for us at, at Roche, we, we thought about how can we do this? And I think there are three ways to do this. You can either invest in more people, in, in different people, and in basically capability and capacity, but often we don't get money for this. Um, second, you can, you can train your people but many people receive negotiation training, I have been for years, and I think we're still not great at it, plus it will take time. So we felt investing in technology as a key enabler and accelerator is what we want to do in, in combination with training. And I think that is, for us, the right approach to give people, I think, a vehicle that they can turn their procurement ability into greater outcomes. For example, in procurement, we are great at running processes, yeah? seven steps, six steps, five steps, whatever, all kinds of analysis, but who actually turns an outcome of an analysis into a real action? Who can translate an outcome of an analysis in terms of data into a real insight that can drive value? Very, very few. And that's what we want this tool to do in partnership with the linking, develop this on how to turn insights into actions, how to give people the benchmark to be better and greater at negotiation, but also how to give them, for example, a bit of a repository platform that can learn from their own outcomes and successes and get also input from, from outside and get some advice and triggers. So all of these things are making our people better rather than replacing them. Final thought on this, I think in the negotiations, for me, it's not the robot you need. It's not the human either because it hasn't worked in the past so much. It needs the combination. So it's the, it's the human, maybe with a bionic arm or something, or with a chip in the head, yeah, visually, virtually, to, to get the information. And that's why we've invested in, in negotiations in that way that we've done it. Yeah, not pure automation, not pure humans like training and new people, but the combo. I think that's important. Well, and let can, me, uh, Charlie, yeah. let me just add to what Patrick said, right? Because I think that's critical. Yeah. It's not about replacing RFPs or auctions or any other tool that you use. It's about adding a critical capability that you want to scale across the enterprise. Training is another point. It's still going to be important, right? You still need to train your people. We're bringing in more and more people into our function from outside. There's a war for, for talent. People are typically coming in who don't have that basic capability because they've not done negotiations for 10 years, regardless of whether they're good or bad, right? The, the problem or the, the challenge is you need to deliver this training, if I just take this as an example, on time when it really matters during the negotiation, not three months, six months, 12 months before you actually need it. And I think that's the, um, that, that's, that's the key thing, that's the gap in the market that, that we are trying and to I think it's close. less training, it's the guidance. It's yeah, the it's, guidance, it's, correct. I, I get yes. the guidance when I need it, and I think that's critical. Oh, absolutely, especially the guidance, especially when you look at talents, bringing in the new generations, how to best approach them, how to get them inspired and motivated. But I can definitely resonate to what you said, especially we are always asked to produce more, get better results and spend less. So definitely. And well, preserve the relationships with your vendors, which is the yes, new thing that's coming. Yes, absolutely, especially for COVID, the whole relationship, the whole, we, the whole item, how we go with partnerships, how we elaborate these, these, mm -hmm. these relationships, because at the end of the day, our vendors, who are they going to pick? The, 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 the procurement professional who's always been uh, so, so bummed with the numbers, or that one who, will, who had that relationship aspect and, uh, and that partnership aspect in mind. Um, Matthias, well, in order to understand this, this huge potential of conducting more negotiations with better outcomes faster, why did you decide in first place to engage in this program with Roche? It's a good question. Um, so I, I would say serendipity to some extent played a huge role in this. 
Um, we were working on implementing our other products. It's a supplier relationship management solution together with Roche. Yeah. That was just, a, a, I would say, a fantastic collaboration from the get-go. So then we started talking, right? Now we have all of this data that we are creating on performance, on quality, on compliances, on many other things, stakeholder feedback. So how do we leverage all of this data and, as Patrick said, right, turn it into insight for the negotiation? And uh, then we found very quickly that our, as you can hear today, right, that our vision is very much aligned. It didn't take us long to put pen to paper and to actually get started, staff a team and go on. And for, for, for me as a solution provider, right, that's a, I would say a match made in heaven because for, for mainly for three reasons. And I try and talk a little bit about this now. Number one, if you are developing a solution, you typically do that a little bit in the ivory tower, right? You run a set of user interviews, you build user journeys, you develop your ICP, your ideal customer profile, then you develop an MVP and then you have your very long path to product market fit. And if you do that with a partner who challenges you to constantly see the product through their eyes, not as a theoretical exercise on a whiteboard, but daily in interactions, that just dramatically increases the time to market for you. Secondly, um, we, we firmly believe, and Patrick indicated that already, right, that the future of software, particular of enterprise software that we do, is not workflow only, right? It sits in subject matter expertise, content, that you build into the, the product so that it can provide decision support, guidance to the user to make them, in effect, better, to, super, to, 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 um, to empower them. And there, right, the, the negotiation center of excellence in Roche with their combined compound knowledge about the what, the why, and the how of negotiations. It's just an indispensable asset to make the product better. And working with an enterprise partner makes your enterprise ready from the get-go, and that's a very elusive feat for, uh, for many software providers that is very hard to do if you don't do it from the get-go. With a, uh, with a good, open, transparent, demanding, but fantastic partner such as Roche. Oh, I can completely agree. Having also worked in, in, in COE for my previous employer, I have to say this constant feedback, these constant challenges, yeah. they, they are helping to, to frame that solution even, even better. Um, Patrick, then, just as a, as a follow-up, if I can ask you, why did you decide to co-create this solution together with Lean Linking? I mean, the, looking at, at our technology perspective at the moment, we have a lot of providers. So why Lean Linking and how does this partnership between Roche being such a global corporation and a small startup, uh, how does it work from your perspective? Yeah. So I think many reasons why, why Lean Linking, but let me bring us back to how I started. So we needed to create efficiencies in our organization. We wanted to become a very different organization. And uh, with the efficiency, invest in many new capabilities. But we still need to do procurement. Yeah? So we still need to do negotiations. We, knew we need to approach this differently. And that's where our vision, I think, matched, like a perfect match. Do negotiations differently, deliver faster, better results, all these things. And that's what we actually needed. So I needed to do more with fewer people with better outcomes. And that's where I think through the scouting, we identify it doesn't exist, what we want to do. Talking about the bionic arm, that theme we didn't find. And that's when we chose Lean Linking. I think we, we've had some experience with them through the relations product, our SRM product. And we felt the true co-creation was there. This wasn't a promise. It wasn't like the roadmap item. It was our foundation for how we work together. And that's when we decided, well, we need something. You want to do something. Let, let's do it together. Let's collaborate. Let's truly build one team. And speed was of essence. So can you commit to, can you do this within less of a year from nothing to actually MVP? Because we needed it, efficiency. And they wanted to market it. And that's how we came together. And that's how we've been working together very successfully. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was the, the perfect match in this moment. And uh, that's, I think, the, the biggest reason why we're working together. I agree, also speed. I mean, the, the time that we've interacted with each other, it's been really very, a very speedy interaction, <laughs> Matthias. But um, maybe let us, let us talk about more outcomes and, and lessons learned. Maybe you could elaborate for our audience what did and what did not work. Yeah, g very good question, right? So. Um, all in all, it, it works very well. That's why we're sitting on stage here together. If it didn't work well, we wouldn't be here. But uh, obviously, right, if you spend, um, as in any relationship, if you spend some extended time together, 
you are invariably going to go through a few rough patches as well. We've spent, and I've looked it up, a collective 40,000 hours on this over the last eight, eight mm -hmm. months. And there were a few things that work and that don't. One is you need a dedicated team, which luckily we had from the outset, right? We have about seven people from the Roche side. We have about 12 to 14 people from, from our side who get together and do this together. And that's the operative word here, together. Um, then you need to co-locate regularly, roughly every three weeks for two to three days, because that just, it just massively increases the rate of progress, right? Not because VCs don't work, but getting those people together, the, the full mind share, the full focus, it, it, this, is, this is where the magic happens then in the end. Then um, I would say you have to release your agenda. I can tell you how often over the last eight months I've redone my product development roadmap, driving my team crazy with it, right? But that's perfectly fine because among the best features that we have in the tool, like um, um, a, a workspace that looks like an app store, like um, structured guidance for negotiation archetypes, strategy ar archetypes, they actually were incepted by the collaboration. We hadn't thought about that before, right? And that's what I meant before. This is where this becomes really powerful. And this is where, um, this is where, where, where good things happen. So, not everything gold, it's like when you're scaling the Mount Everest, you reach the different base camps. Of course, the journey is hard and arduous sometimes, but it's a damn good journey to be on, right? At least from, at least from our side. Thank you for sharing. And Patrick, from, from your perspective, how is it um, working and are you actually realizing the benefits which you expected with your team? And what would you recommend to others, especially also in, in the audience, um, who are thinking about engaging with software startups and especially in such a co-creation program? Yeah, maybe talking outcomes first very quickly. So I think we are seeing not only the, the outcomes, the benefits from the collaboration and, and the product is maturing and we are, we are ready to bring this to the organization in, in record time, I think in terms of development from nothing to where we are. But also we've got a lot of confirmation that our digital strategy is working, which is we're limiting our sort of core S2P product to the bare minimum and complement this with a number of solution providers, either startups, point solutions. We're also playing with a bit of outsourcing so we're building our own, even though I hate the word, e ecosystem. And this collaboration, the way we've worked and what we're delivering and how this all functions together was a big risk, but it actually starts working, which I think is the biggest and greatest outcome for me. It's confirmation of our strategy. I think the second piece is we actually see the outcomes here, not only in this product that we're bringing to market, but we're engaging the organization. So there's a lot of appetite and interest in negotiations there's a lot of learning already, like training almost on the job while we develop this thing together. There's a lot of content that we are producing that we can readily use when this thing is live. So which is another big outcome. And I think uh, the third big positive is we're working differently. This is sort of a very agile software development approach, which we can use across the organization. Why should mm. we just work in software like mm. this? So I'm bringing lots of people into this project because I want them to learn and realize how we work. In terms of what others should learn, take the risk, yeah? No one usually gets fired for picking a big solution provider and just following the roadmap, but you're also never going to deliver any value with this. So take the risk, be bold, and explore other solutions out there. Invest and co-create in, in these things that really solve your problems. And don't listen to roadmap and other people's problem and think like, yeah, this could be mine, so I buy this off-the-shelf <laughs> software. I think it's not going to work. We've tried this many, many times. Um, we've now gone a different approach, and so far it's, it's really, really paying off. So take the risk, be bold, and, and try it out. It's my recommendation. Tibian, I, I love the fact that you said creating that ecosystem, especially onwards, because when you talk about change management, there's no better way than actually engaging the team mm -hmm. already early on and then not confronting them suddenly with a change. And this gradual introduction to this new way of thinking, um, totally. I think that's very, very beneficial. Um, so, I'm sure your recommendations and your tips are much, much appreciated by the audience today. Um, so maybe you could just elaborate for everyone, what is next for Roche on the digital procurement journey? Sure, I'll, I'll keep this brief. So first of all, stabilization is critical. We've been through radical change, not only operating model, organization, technology, we ripped everything out and replaced. So that needs some stabilization. Um, we'll focus on optimization now. So how do we, the products, the things that we've brought, and these are number, how can we optimize? We're also exploring what's next. 
yeah, constantly challenging us, is what we have the right thing? Listening to our customers, because we believe in not doing procurement for procurement, but doing actually procurement for the business. Yeah, we should listen to them. If they don't like our product, then we, we have failed, because they're not going to use it. They always find ways around this. So really engaging, further engaging, looking for optimization, looking for what's next, looking for the next product that we can bring in to solve our problem, rather than listening to the roadmap of some of the people that we have already engaged. Because we know our problems best, we want to find the best solution. That's sort of next, a more philosophical answer than a roadmap answer for me. No, but that's perfect. I mean, constantly, consistently challenging the status quo, right? So um, maybe, Matthias, for you, same question. Where are you leading, lean linking next? As I said before, right, for us, it's just the start of the journey, really. Um, there's a hell of a lot left to do in our journey to the mountain, to scale the Mount Everest, right? We're maybe base camp one, if at all. And I could talk a long time about product roadmap and expert platform and more AI and all of this. But in the end, what it boils down to, right, is we found that co-creation really works for us, for our partner, and that it creates value and creates value faster than it does if you do things on your own. So what the, the next step that we are going to do is we are going to bring other companies into what we call a solution advisory board, interested parties that want to join us on that journey. The two of us who want to share their insights, their requirements, provide insight and input to the product development roadmap so that we can build something even better for the procurement teams and leaders out there. That's basically, if you will, in a nutshell, what we are going to do. And again, right, it's a journey. It's a very good journey to have, and we are lucky to have it. I will say one thing, though, if I may, very quickly, because we have two minutes and 15 seconds left. <laughs> so I want to say a big thank you. It's not just the two of us. We are sitting on stage here, right? And we are speaking about that's so cool to work together. It is. But in the end, it's us being on calls and meeting for coffee and for, for dinner. It's actually the guys that are sitting in the trenches who are doing the work every single day. So what I would ask you, Sebastian, Martin, rest of the Roche team, my team, get up. And when people are going to hopefully applaud for that session, 90% uh, of that applause is actually to you. Thank you for making it happen. Thanks, really. Get up. I'm serious. <laughs> Must be more. My guys are standing in the back. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for the team, for the audience, for listening today, and especially for that incredible thought leadership and all your insights and tips and recommendations and best practices. I mean, that's how we can learn as procurement professionals from each other by benchmarking, by continuously, persistently engaging in these conversations, if it's panels or benchmarking or roundtables. But um, I, I see that we have loads of customer questions, but at the moment, no time to answer them live. So please, for all your customer questions, for all your questions, thought leadership questions, please just visit us at the booth, which is literally the first booth when you enter the, the next room. And we would love to answer all, your, all of your questions. I see many, many came in. So don't hesitate, just straight on. And we would love to answer all of your questions and share a lot more best practices with each other and connect with us on LinkedIn, right? Thank you so much for your time. It was a great pleasure to be here with you speaking in Amsterdam. And I look forward to a lot of thought leadership throughout the conference. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Charlotte. you. Thank you.